All right, so we start chapter two, whole plant water relations, where we see um, we were taking information we talked about in chapter one, basic properties of water and how it moves from cell to cell down water potential gradients and so forth, uh, and we extrapolate that to uh, moving water from soil to leaf surfaces. So we will spend a bit of time on soil here in the beginning. Um, and so we'll start with a diagram here that shows the soil, basic soil structure in the pattern or in the, in the uh, format of what we call a soil profile. So this is sort of at a, at a macro scale uh, view of soil. If you were to dig a soil pit, you'd see basically a layering um, effect here. So we start with this first layer here, which is called the O horizon, <coughs> which is composed of leaf litter and organic matter. So we've we, you many times we'll see it referred to as the the forest floor and depending on the kind of vegetation of course will determine how much of um, leaf litter and what type you'll see there uh, it also includes um, humus which is the unrecognizable organic de you know partially decomposed organic matter unrecognizable so you know formerly leaves um, twigs um, perhaps fungi uh, other or soil organisms all kind of contribute to the humus layer uh, which has sort of a fluffy component the next layer that we're looking at here is the a horizon uh, which is what we refer to as the top soil and it receives some um, organic matter that sort of moves down from the O horizon into the A horizon. So down from here down, well actually here down into here. Um, and because it's rich in organic matter, it's also rich in nutrients. Uh, the next layer is the B horizon, which we're looking at right here, where uh, nutrients that were decomposed in the A horizon have sort of leached down into the B horizon. There's less organic matter here, so we were generally refer to this as the mineral layer even though the topsoil contains probably the most minerals and the most high value soil because of the presence of organic matter. Uh, the sea horizon is kind of in this region right here where um, it's mainly composed of particles of rock. Particles of rock from the bedrock layer, the R horizon, uh, or the parent material, it's also called the bedrock. And so we actually see some of this material, you know, breaking down and moving up into the sea horizon as a result of weathering, either chemical weathering where water or um, carbonic acids or other organic acids break down the rock, and roots that kind of push. Um, uh, rocks through rocks and create cracks in the freeze thaw cycle uh, that will create um, mechanical weathering. So this is kind of uh, the general format of soil profiles and we can see how that translates into different ecosystems here from eastern uh, deciduous forests where there's a the climate is relatively mild and, and humid and there's a regular um, pattern of rainfall throughout the year and what kind of stands out here is we have this um, basically combination of O and A horizon here uh, we move into the B horizon down here we're looking at the first diagram here and then this C, uh, C horizon is down here at the base um, which is largely clay and iron and has that orange appearance. In drier um, uh, shrubland areas, Mediterranean climate re regions, we'll write that up here, uh, such as in the western US, uh, Mediterranean Basin, Chile, um, and parts of Australia, we can see that there is an O horizon here. Um, there's our um, a horizon is in this region here and C here uh, and so in this uh, region there's an accumulation of iron and magnesium which gives the this horizon that more of that um, here let's move this down there we go, so right there, and this one goes down here. That gives the um, B horizon a bit more of this sort of purple 
color. There we go. Um, in the prairie grasslands, we see that the O horizon is very small. There's this really large uh, A horizon um, compared to the B down here. And so the A horizon be, tends to be richer in organic matter. Um, and that gives it that dark color because of the presence of roots and that constant turnover of roots in uh, grasslands. And then finally over here in the, in the conifer forests we have sort of almost um, a non-existent O horizon. The A horizon is fairly well leached out and uh, it's called the eluvial phase uh, or eluvial um, horizon. And the B horizon is where the organic matter is co collecting and so that's called alluvial. So A is eluvial and B is alluvial. Kind of like we use the terms emigration and immigration. So um, um, nutrients are sort of leaching down into the B horizon uh, and here's our or lower sea horizon. So this is characteristic of conifer forests where the forest, the, the litter is highly acidic and it leaches all these um, uh, organic components down into the B horizon and leaves very little organic matter here. Um, Alright, so if we go to the next view here, that just gave us kind of an idea of how to see uh, the soil structure in profile. Um, because the soil structure will vary with climate and bedrock origin as well as in vegetation. <coughs> Let's go back up here. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the components that determine soil structure, um, which has a solid phase, a liquid phase, and a gas phase. So we'll start with the solid phase. and which is what we spend the most time on here and the solid phase results from weathering um, the weathering of the parent material or the bedrock and um, basically that weathering breaks the bedrock or the soil down into three particles classes so it forms three particle whoops class sizes which we'll focus on here and is going to kind of help us determine um, some some basics with water movement now it's the proportion por the proportion of the three class sizes of particles that d that is what we refer to as soil texture and we'll get a, we'll go into a little bit of soil texture here in just a minute so the three particle set uh, class sizes you can see in the diagram here um, start with uh, basically sand and sand has a particle class size anywhere from 0.05 to 2 millimeters uh, and then we have silt which is um, where part, so that's sand is the large um, structure here. Silt is shown here uh, relative to the size of sand and varies in, in diameter from 0.05 to 0.002 millimeters in diameter and clay is um, com by relative comparison the smallest less than 0.002 uh, millimeters in diameter. So clay particles are, are magnitudes less than sand particles. And so that's going to translate into different um, characteristics depending on their proportion in the, so in the soil. So as we know, the particle size of sand is the largest. And the clay is the smallest. Okay, now that's going to lend some certain characteristics. Um, first of all, porosity is going to result from differences in pore sizes or in um, diameter sizes of the particles. Porosity t takes up 40 to 60 percent of the soil volume, meaning the air spaces uh, in the soil. So volume per volume 
uh, it contributes 40 to 60 percent of the soil volume. Porosity is defined as the interconnected channels between soil particles. And that's going to be important for water flow. Okay, so we'll show porosity here in our little table that we're creating. As in when the soil is largely composed of sand, there will be large pores or high proportion of large pores, they're called. Uh, when the soil is highly rich in, or concentrated in clay particles, then the pores are smaller and, and we refer to them as capillary pores. Okay. Uh, another characteristic that is translated by or transferred to soil is hydraulic conductivity and I'm going to abbreviate that there because we'll define it down here. Hydraulic conductivity is the ease with which water moves through the soil We'll abbreviate through there. Well, we can also uh, talk about hydraulic conductivity is the rate of flow. So, uh, so it's easy to sort of think about this. If the large pore size occurs, larger pore sizes occur in sand compared to clay, which of these um, broad uh, particle class sizes is going to have the highest conductivity? Well, it should be relatively um, logical that this would have the highest rate of water flow or conductivity, whereas the conductivity would be the lowest with clay. And then the last little part of our table here we're going to write is a little a few words here. Water holding capacity. Oops, hold on. which is basically the water retention. So I'll abbreviate it here. Water holding capacity is water retention. How much the water can sort of stay attached to plate clay particles by adhesive forces. Um, and it's measured as, as water content. a condition that we'll define here shortly at field capacity, um, which is basically the weight of water or the mass of water relative to the dry weight of soil times 100. Okay, so water holding capacity is going to be the lowest in sand and the highest in clay because the smaller the particle size the more there is an attraction between the water uh, between water and the, the the particle of soil 